everybody, this is the Frustrated Canadian, and welcome back to our how-to series. In our last episode, we designed a beautiful, yet not currently functioning, trumpet interchange. Uh, this is a very good interchange if you are looking to create something that's highly functional, funnel a lot of traffic, and just overall looks really clean and can be very compact. Like This one is pretty spread out because I wanted to go a little bit more for the, the aesthetics look, but you can make them very compact. You could bring these up and just change that around. I do want to th take a second and thank everybody for the, the love and support on this series so far. I think the first two videos both had at least 200 views. And I think our third one on the Trumpet Interchange has just hit 100, I think. Maybe 90. It's getting it's getting there. And yeah, I just want to take a second and say if you are enjoying this series, if you learned something, please comment below on the video. It really means a lot and I appreciate all the feedback on these videos and any any comments that you may have regarding our videos. And if you haven't yet, check out the first video of this series where I show you how to design your intro to a city, how to start your first city, and just get things going. And the second episode of that series is how to design low density residential suburbs. So quite a nice little video. If you are interested, feel free to go take a look. You can see we've got this really nice pedestrian friendly zone. And uh, yeah, so let's hop right into our next video. So in this video, I will be showing you how to design a beautiful, highly effective, highly, I don't even know how to describe it, like a, a very highly efficient oil industry zone. So one thing you will want to do if you are new to this game is you go into your info view here up at the top left and you can come down on the right side. There is a little thing called natural resources. And if you click on it, you will be able to see exactly what kind of resources you have. So yellow is crops, blue is ores, so that would be stuff like gold, minerals, all that kind of fun stuff. Uh, oil is obviously black, <laughs> and uh, you'll have green for farmland. You don't really see much green here, but it kind of just depends on where the trees are. So if I turn this off here, you can see a lot of trees, a lot of green. So let's, uh, let's hop right into it. So we can see here at the bat that we have a pretty extensive oil industry, and we're not doing anything with it, not oil, but an area with oil. So let us start by designing um, our entrance. So we'll scroll into our, our road to think, our road spot, and we're going to use industrial roads, just because obviously this will be an industrial area, so more industrial is better. And we are going to connect this highway up like this. Um, don't mind the fact that this highway goes directly into an industrial road. I'm doing this for a very specific reason at the moment. And that reason is, as you can see here, we have a, a, probably an inefficient, inefficient circ traffic or intersection. And we want to make this efficient because we're going to have a lot of vehicles coming in and out of this area. It's going to be an interesting area. So we are going to do a traffic circle. So if you come off from the left here, we'll do a one way road. We're going to go up one node. We're going to go all the way to the left, one full section, and we're going to go all the way down. And we are going to do that four times and we are going to create a beautiful traffic circle or a beautiful but a functional traffic circle doesn't look good obviously and we're going to change these roads into highway roads because we want people to be able to travel fast and we can probably keep it as two for now this is a pretty big traffic circle and we'll fix this back um, into this i don't believe we necessarily need to have these to be no noise on that there's not going to have anybody living here, so honestly there's no point in having noise cancelling roads for this. So, we do know the area. You can actually see the outline of this field here. I'm oh, sorry, wrong thing. You can see exactly where we're going to be building. We're going to build in here. And we could even potentially move up this way, but I think for now, like this even would have been pretty cool with a bridge and stuff, but functionality is our key. And you can see how that oil is staining the land, not staining the land per se, but creating its impact on the land. So let's go up here. We're just going to design a very functional area because it doesn't need to be perfect in my opinion. I just kind of think... Like my in my personal view, let's just bring this straight up like that because I want to have it perpendicular, like so. It doesn't need to cover that, so you don't actually have to carry it, cover the oil area very specifically because you will have buildings in your oil industry that aren't specifically 
only oil because obviously there's going to be buildings that um, will be more, I don't know, what, what's the word? Functional, I say, like a, a worker's barracks, um, stuff like that. So you don't necessarily need to have every all that, like if you're not producing oil out of the spot, what's the point of having it covered, if that makes sense to you guys. Um, I need to stop saying, um, I, that is one of some feedback I got from the last video is that I do say the word, the, the phrase, um, a little too much. So I, I am making a cognizant effort to decrease that. So well, now that you've got this, we have our area ready. We don't necessarily need these in the middle here anymore because we have our traffic circle ready to go. So what we are going to do is we're going to come into our gar garbage and industry zone. Sorry, garbage instead of garbage instead of weird. And we are going to plop down. So this guy here is our oil and cement building. And if you don't want to keep this thing open, just come in here and you can click that. So this oil and cement building, there we go. We have now have the poplar oil field. So we're going to, and you can change this name. We're going to call this um, heavy oil field. Because maybe, maybe we have heavy oil. Never know. And we actually are going to put some power in here. And just because we are in an oil zone, I'm just going to put an oil, oil plant because makes the most sense and we'll get us some water piping over here because you do need to have all the, the bare necessities when it comes to having your city grow properly here so you need to make sure you have water power basically everything that you would have anywhere basically um yeah and i'm saying i'm um, again i need to control that a little bit here uh if you are learning things in these videos i have a favor to ask subscribe like the video i it it actually does mean a lot we are just at the, I, i'm as of this video we're going i'm at 249 subs and i would love to to see it grow more so appreciate that and so now what you're you're going to do now that you've kind of created your oil all kind of stuff or your, your infrastructure we're going to come in here you can see it by placing this building we've created something called heavy oil fill this industrial zone you're going to paint you're going to paint that in and we're going to do we're going to be having a little bit of, I don't think we can quite have offshore, but we're going to stretch that over there. We're going to stretch this whole area. This is all going to be heavy oil field. Um, we'll go outside a little bit. We can fix this barrier as we go. And boom, voila, you are now ready to get your resources going. So, a, a worker's barracks. So, obviously, we're going to need to have camps. So, I, I work in the oil industry myself, and I've been into the field a few times on the rigs. And you need to kind of, you need to have places for people to work and you obviously need to have maintenance and uh, now i'm going to talk to you a little bit about how cool the oil industry is because i think it's the coolest thing ever so you can see these two different types of buildings here i'm going to teach you guys a little bit so a rig so these rigs that we have here i'll place one down and i'll place down derricks so as a, i'm an exploration geologist in the oil industry and when you come up with a prospect this is the first thing you drill you put it in you put a rig in because when you're looking for the prospecting drilling it, you have to use a drilling rig. So this is what those are for. This is the drill. And the second thing you put down, once you've drilled that well, you've completed it, you can toss in a pump jack. So you can get that oil out of the ground. Uh, you don't always necessarily need a pump jack, so it depends on your reservoir's condition. So if it's got high pressure, you don't necessarily need those pump jacks. But I digress. I don't want to bury you guys down with too much, um, but there is such thing called as un under pressure and over pressured reservoirs and you kind of basically if it's under pressure you need a pump you need something that's going to let that oil flow and if it's over pressured you don't need anything like that it's it's basically just gonna you're gonna pump the oil too fast or it'll flow by itself so one thing we have is called an, oil, an over pressure reservoir so if you hit an over pressure zone as you're drilling you can cause a drill kick and if you've ever seen what an oil well looks like when it's blowing out it's not a good time um, and that's what happens when you have an overpressured well you hit a zone where you're drilling mud so when you're drilling you have something called drilling mud and if your drilling mud isn't high enough or you don't have enough drilling mud to keep that pressure up you can actually cause your drill stem to basically come out of the ground and this is when you get those really crazy explosions um, not exactly safe because it can also let on fire because remember you are playing with hydrocarbons these things burn um, quite efficiently, as you all know. Hydrocarbon density, the energy density of hydrocarbons is very high. Um, so, yeah. So what I'm doing here is I'm just kind of creating a... I don't, how would I describe this? I'm creating a... What an oil field will look like. So typically, so I'm in, I'm in Canada, and our oil fields are typically very remote and rural. 
So you wouldn't have all these roads like this coming through. Uh, you'd have a lot of dirt roads, roads built by oil companies specifically. So the company, last company I was at, uh, we actually built our own roads and upkept them ourselves. So the province didn't build them. We would build roads out to our leases and you would go and operate them yourselves. Very cool. Um, it's a very, it's a very, um, what's the word, capital intensive industry. You need to use a lot of money because it costs a lot of money to, to run wells like this. So let us do our first exploratory zone. So uh, let's say we don't know if there's oil up here. Let's toss down a couple of rigs to this area. And you know, I, I kind of want to paint this a little larger. So maybe we'll come out over here. Maybe we've got a pretty large unknown area coming out here to the north. So we're going to have some roads. Kinda, let's Instead of having perfectly good roads out here in the exploratory area. So let's exploratory industry zone. We're gonna have this as a as a as a, a just a crappy road. It's just gonna be garbage. And we're gonna have this kind of come out here like this. We're gonna bring it out. And maybe this road kind of came over here like this. And we have just discovered a new oil field potentially. Are the geologists, people like myself, we identify that there is a zone that may or may not have oil. So up here, this is gonna be the non-productive zone. We know as a fact for the game, there's no oil here. But in the oil industry, exploration is what it's all about. You're gonna place a rig in this. You're gonna see, is this really gonna produce? Is it not gonna produce? You never know. And say over here, this is our, our well-developed area. We know that there's oil. We have pump jacks pumping the oil out of the ground. We're getting that liquid gold out. So tossing a couple of these guys. You would definitely have, still have drilling. So in these fields, you'll actually still have rigs out there, pulling some oil out of the ground, pulling that heavy crude out. So toss in a couple uh, rigs here. So this would be development rigs. So in a field that's been previously explored, you'll have development rigs. And these rigs are out there looking like drilling previously identified plays. So if you know there's oil, you can get more out of the ground just by doing this stuff. So we know there's oil here. That's the point of this. We toss in some of these guys, maybe a little, a little rig right here. Get a couple of small guys out there. And then out here, we're still looking. We're we're exploring. We're we're feeling out. We're feeling out. Right. I feel like I'm telling a freaking story on this. Like these are not producing oil out here. These are all exploratory rigs. And I, like, what's it saying? Are these are these producing oil? Not enough natural resources. They need oil, but they store oil. Oh, CC Skylines has it a little off. Um, as a geologist, I know this. So we're gonna actually do some storage, and we're gonna do storage caverns. So storage caverns are basically spot like. They're underground. You have these old salt domes where you can store oil. And we're also going to do a refinery as district over here. So let's get this here. This is where we're going to do our refineries because your refineries aren't necessarily always going to be really within your your oil zone. You're not going to put them on your oil field. Like they might be outside or adjacent or connected to. So let's actually get some water connected over here as well. Because obviously we need to, you, as it's City Skylines, we need to make sure we're doing things proper. And like so. And let's make sure that these up here are doing good. Just like so. Like that. And may, uh, maybe at the beginning of the video I'll give you guys a story. We'll talk about all these different things if you want. Um, and if anybody has any questions or comments about the oil industry, just toss them in the comments. I. I'm an active worker in the oil industry right now. I I know a lot, I know quite a bit about it. I wouldn't say I know a lot. So I'm still a junior. I'm not a full full geologist yet. I'm still getting my still ch cutting my teeth is the word I would say. So let's toss in our pyrolysis sludge plants. Let's get a couple of them in here. We should probably have some garbage removal in the area. Actually, not gonna lie, I didn't even think about that. And we should have some fire. Uh, because they and healthcare. So one thing I will tell you right now is healthcare in the oil industry is exceptionally important. They drill it into you that you need uh, safety. Safety is huge. It's the most one of the one of the if not the most important part of the oil industry is keeping our our workers safe and healthy. So much to m many people say, oh, it's the oil industry. They don't care about the workers. Gosh, I will tell you right now, workers are the most important part of the oil industry. They, nothing happens without the workers, as you all know. Like, you need your workers to be healthy and happy and safe. 
So let's get an petroleum refinery. You need to import a whole lot of stuff for this, um, but we're just going to do this because this is a pretty cool big building. And you would see refineries. Um, in Alberta, we don't have really, and where I live in Canada, we don't really have a ton of refineries. Oh, we can only build one refinery. Oh, okay. That's hilarious. All right. Well, whatever. Let's go back to where we were. Uh, we're at 15 minutes. Ah, I don't want to beat you guys over this, but I got so much geology stuff to talk about here. Oh, mamma mia. Uh, we can't do offshore because obviously this is not big enough. You'd want to do offshore like this. But there's no oil in the water, so we're just going to ignore that for the time being. So what you would see in the oil industry is a ton of power lines going all over the place. And before we do that, actually, let's continue over here. So let's say we do know, again, that there is oil over here. Let's pump it. You gotta get your pump jacks out. We're drilling this stuff. We're making money. That's that's the whole the whole point here is making money, and this is where we're getting that exploration up. So let's do these. Let's toss a couple of really small drilling rigs in, just like so. A couple more pump jacks over here. Your field will never look perfect, and let me tell you that right now. <laughs> the oil industry is far from a perfect industry. We don't need these power lines anymore. So let's bring these out like this. Yeah, because in the field, so one of the companies I worked at, we actually had, we brought solar panels onto our, our work sites because it's hard to get electricity all the way out to a lot of these, your operating sites. So a lot of people get, kind of give the oil industry flack um, just for being an oil industry, but we actually use a lot of renewable energy in the industry because it's one of the most efficient ways to do things. And you don't get pollution showing up like this usually, I guess, I don't think. Not in my opinion, but yeah. So this is a pretty nice industry so far. Maybe I'll do a little detailing here off of the stream, off of the video, and I'll do like a little time lapse of this stuff and let you guys kind of see how this uh, all all works out. So I will be back at the end of the video. I, I do hope you guys enjoyed this. This is an industry I'm very passionate about. Um, I've worked in the industry for a long, I don't know, three years, four years, I guess, at this point. It's not, I was about to say a long time, but that's not really that long of a time. And it's just such a, such a rewarding industry. And I, I, I don't like that people villainize it. We need the resources that the oil industry does provide for us. So yeah, these shouldn't be producing. See, this is the thing. We hit an exploratory basin with no oil. And that means these rigs don't do anything. These rigs are producing because they're just on the edge of that oil, but we know for a fact that these guys will not. So, kind of fun. Kind of fun, isn't it? You guys are learning a lot about the oil industry today. I hope I hope you guys do take away from this a little bit. It's, it's some very interesting work, and I, I hope that people begin to understand it and respect the, all the hard workers who work out in the, on the field. It's not an easy job. I know a lot of people um, don't respect the oil industry and don't respect the workers, and it's it's sad. But I will I'll stop I'll get off my my soapbox soapbox here, and we'll we'll end off the video. So again, feel free to like and subscribe if you do enjoy the content. This is your boy, the frustrated Canadian, and I will catch you on the flip flop. Cheers, everybody.